season here. Top two, well, the last two teams standing here, Hillmorton here and Red, Christ College and White. Head coach Tom Huggin, Higgins, sorry. How have you found the, you know, the grade here? First time ever, obviously everyone's first time entering it, but how have you found the growth of the team over the season? Oh, it's been good, eh? The boys get to come out every Tuesday and uh, compete against some of the best players in Christchurch at the under-15 level, so it's been really good, yeah. So then your team's only dropped two games all season. Yeah. One of them's to these guys. The other team that you dropped the game to, you actually reversed it last week in the semi-final. So you take a bit of confidence, but what do you have to do this game to sort of reverse, you know, have a chance to beat these guys, the number one seed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the game last week in the semi was a huge game for us. Um, really worked on our things we struggled with last game, and that's all we have to do tonight, really, is just work on what they shut us down with last week, and that's just all we have to do, really focus on ourselves. Oh, awesome. We're a tiny bit late here, about five minutes and change to tip off. Thank you very much for the time, Tom, and, and all the best for the game. We hope it's an exciting one here. So, thank you. So next up we're going to get Dave Langrell from the Hillmorton Gators, ah, uh, Hillmorton Tigers is going to be coming over, they're the number one seed, so he'll be talking to us just about how the how the season's gone for his team as well. So Dave Langrell, I feel like I've only just seen you, a lot of these guys played in the Canterbury under 15 um, weekend competition, what sort of confidence do you take after, you know, knocking off the number one team, but now you are the number one team? Yeah, um, we've had great games against Christ College and um, and Cashmere and Stat this year. So all those four teams, I feel like are pretty even, and you know under 15 level anything can happen. Um, so hopefully the boys show up and they certainly play with a lot of grit and intensity on Saturday. Yeah. And so yeah, hopefully we can do that again tonight. Excellent. And this is obviously the first year of the competition. It's something that we're we're expecting to grow. But how have you found the first? You know, this is the. You know, obviously we're not expecting hundreds and hundreds of teams, but 10 teams entered it, bit of a variation in comp competitive levels between them. How have you found it as a learning experience for your guys? Uh, we've absolutely loved it. Like, the guys have loved playing on Tuesday. We've got a couple of kids who, uh, you know, 7th of Venice can't play on a Saturday, those sort of things. So it's an opportunity for them to play at a high level. Um, and, yeah, just another great opportunity for the kids to get better and play two quality games a week. And, yeah, we've loved it. No, that's fantastic. All the best. We're hoping... Hoping it's an exciting game. I've had two that haven't been the most closest at the end, but yep. all the best for the game. Thank you very much for your time, Dave. All right, I would normally throw to Rani, but he's not here, so I'll be walking back to the commentary box, and I'll be bringing you the game live. We've got just under four minutes to go here, so I'll be back talking to you very, very soon. down to my regular spot that I'll be for the duration of this well of most of the game here and I'm just about to be joined by my co-commentator Rani Hammond he's actually not an old boy of Christ College he's actually from another high school but he has been involved with their I guess their basketball program for the last couple of seasons so welcome to the the commentary table Rani yeah thank you James thank you it's a pleasure to be on board and yeah it's been the last four years uh, four years of Christ College coaching basketball which has been an absolute thrill yeah, so these two teams obviously have played once already this season. We will have to double check all these numbers. Um, just from experience, we've got some printed out sheets of paper here. They're probably not the way that the numbers that most of them are wearing, but we do know a number of the players. So the key ones from Hillmorton, which we can just see warming up there. So tall guy there right in the middle of the screen. JJ Finlater, he's number 14 on the sheet. We'll have to check he's just caught the ball there. And I can already see he's number 12 the game so he's the key rebounder for the team and then number nine Toby Langrell key key point guard for them as well and then you'll see Junior Foyava as well from Hillmorton but key players I'll let you talk about the Christ College ones I know I have my idea of who three of them are but let me know your thoughts about the key ones to look out for there yeah look I mean the the key players for Christ College I mean you've got to you've got to sort of respect the number 22 Tafiti Kate he's obviously the brother to Iha Kate in New Zealand New Zealand representative and um, he's, he's had a very good season uh, as a year 10. Number 35 as well, Josh Shanahan. Another really good talented uh, player and then I actually think um, number 52, Luca Luca Kenny. Right. Um, you know, big long body really good, a massive rebounder and I, I think he'll probably be key if I mean if Phil Morton can box Luca out of the game It'll be a bit of a it'll be a bit of a challenge for him to be involved, I think, in a way. Um, but yeah, those would be my 
sort of three key players yeah. for Christ College. Well, I know Archie Nijar, I think he was the other one that coach Tom Higgins said is another one to watch there. But yeah, I think it's probably Tafferty Kate and then Josh Shanahan, Shanahan is the main two. And then probably a, you know, a relatively large number of players about the same level and it's just seeing who will step up when it comes down to it. But yeah, you mentioned boxing out. That will be, yeah, I've seen games where JJ Finlay to number 12 for Hillmorton it's just like I'm more athletic than people and forgets to do it and then other games where he's like actually I've really got to be locked in and stop these guys from getting rebounds which he did against Kashmir in the under 15 final so it will be yeah we'll, we'll have to have a look and see has there been a bit of a drop in intensity from Hillmorton after a great under 15 win or have they used that as a stepping stone to sort of bounce them into this game here yeah 100% so referees for this game here, we can just see it at centre court there. Sandra French, she's got her, well they both have her back to her, she's right at the scoreboard table. And then Cheyenne Coles is the second official as well with her. Live stats, we're going to have that brought to you by Fox Grey. And then Richard Kinney is going to be assisting as much as he can with that, but he's also responsible for referee interaction. So if he suddenly has to hop up and we lose live stats, that is the reason why. How good is Fox Grey? Man of many talents. He does. He, he's following my... Um, you want to get involved in sports in New Zealand, get get good at as many things as you possibly can because you never know where you're going. people are going to need you to jump in and step up. So last pre-game words here, what do you think uh, Coach Higgins is saying to the team? Oh look, I think I think the big one for this team is probably going to be composure, just staying composed and and uh, and, and, and keeping, a, keeping their heads in the game uh, in a way because if they can do that, they know this Hill Morden team is going to be very good, they're going to be well prepared. So the key thing for this Christ College thing, in my opinion, would probably be composure and staying composed for the full 40. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's younger guys, year 9 and 10. It's easier said than done. You can say all the things like, hey, we know it's going to be a lift in intensity and, you know, people are possibly going to play harder than they have throughout the season because the game's really, you know, this is what you're playing for here locally. But, you know, it can make for very exciting games as well just to see who'll show up. Yeah, 100%. So just correcting the last couple of numbers here and names I need to get as well. So I'm writing them up on our... You can just use my sheet as well here <laughs> once I have the last couple of ones done. But looking to come in for Hillmorton, I can read... So I can see Toby Langrell, number 9. Junior Fuiava, he's 24. Chucky Tahiri is number 7. JJ Finlater in centre circle, number 12. And then Toby's younger brother, Finn Langrell, is number four there on the other side. And then it's centre court for Christ College. Number 52, Luca Kenny. 24, Jack Howard. 22, Tafferty Cakes. Big player in the, key player in the under-15 national championship. Number six, Archie Nijar. And then down the, just in front of me is Josh Shanahan, and he is number 35. So just looking at the size here, you feel like Luca Kenny's probably going to win the jump ball, but Finlater does definitely have some hops. So the last game your guys had won in overtime against Kashmir High School, so yeah. they'll be looking to try and build on that and see if they can, you know, really surprise two teams that beat them. As Kenny does win the opening tip, here's Tafferty Kate straight ahead, great lead pass there, and Kenny opens the scoring 2 0 for Christ College. It's probably the perfect start for them. They wanted to set the tone immediately and, and were able to, really. Yeah, it's Quick almost bucket. a surprise there, like just, yeah, unguarded, go straight to the bucket and easily, you know, pass there, unguarded and finish. Yeah, 100%. But Hillborn, and we know, very, very good shooters, and Finlater there, follow up. And that's a good start there for Hillmorton. Missed jump shot, offensive rebound, and then a foul on the big man. 52, the first foul of the game for Christ College. <coughs> so JJ Finlater being a pretty good free throw shooter as well. As I say that, I look like a liar all of a sudden. It happens. It does happen more often than... <laughs> than what you'd expect. And that's possibly the, the pre-game nerves here. Second one a bit strong and easy rebound easily taken by Kenny. And here's Shanahan. Good size here if he's going to be used in the point guard spot along with Kate. Kate off the down screen. He finds Shanahan back in the corner and great defense there by the younger Langrell. 
and just hit the arm there as that ball was going through. We're almost unlucky there, like it's it's one of those ones, he definitely didn't move his arm, but is the arm out of the cylinder, in which yeah. case it's, you know, it's one of those plays, you've got to be sure if you're getting through, you don't want to lose the ball and risk just giving a turnover. Here's Kate back up the top as well, just loses the ball for a moment. 10 seconds on the shot clock, so plenty of time here. And Shanahan, he fumbles it, and it is a turnover this time against Christ College. Just unlucky, I think. I, th I think there, the, probably a, a little bit of missing composure, perhaps. And yeah, a bit of up the court pressure here from Howard against Langrell, but yeah, I mean, the, the hard thing with this Hillmorton team is you've got Fuyava who just goes to the rim and scores there. And Langrell, like it's really hard to <coughs> to cover two of them at the same time. Shanahan, he dribbles into a three-point bucket, no good there, but Kenny, big strong rebound. Dislodges Fuyava, Kate this time for three. Banks, no good, and good box out there by Finn Langrell. Chucky Tahiri here up the right-hand side. Finn Langrell goes to his brother Toby. Into the paint, straight through, kick out to Tahiri. Finlater thinks about it, little fake, drives into two players, and that's a good no-call there. Great defence, Cross College. Just off screen, you can see Dilshan, the assistant coach for, Hodama, for Hillmorton, appealing for a foul there, but that's the sort of thing, I, I think you're driving into trouble there. Tahiri, though, they'll be happy now. No yeah. foul called, out of bounds, resulting play, three points for Hillmorton. He's not so upset anymore about, about a no call, but... No, I agree with you, James. I think you, I like the new approach of that we've had for a couple of years. Archie Nijar with a nice layup. I like the approach that, that referees have been taking lately in the last couple of years with the disciplined defence reward yep. that. I really like it. and It stops the bailout calls that just sort of slow the game down. As yeah, as Finn Langrell's whistled for a fair, uh, travel there. Yeah, I agree totally with you. I feel like when I was growing up and just getting into coaching it was any contact was like oh, I'm not sure so that's a foul 100%. whereas now there's a lot more of like is it, I say when I've got younger referees or newer ones with me like basketball is a contact sport it's not a collision sport so if there's a collision you're gonna have to call something but contact you just have to decide like is that just part of the game like the defense has got good position to stop the offense but it's not enough to be a block it's not enough to be a ch you know no one's at fault it's not enough to be a charge there's Tahiti a little bit off to the right there and good rebound there from Kate. Gets past two defenders, gets past three, four and five oh, defenders. Man. I think that's something we've seen him do so consistently all year, even last year as well towards the end of the season. He just, the, his, his approach to just gra grabbing the rebound and putting it straight on the floor and just pushing the yep. tempo from there, is, it works so well and like we've just seen, he's... He's had a tough, he's, you know, he didn't have an easy layup. And, and he's at the line with one more. So just coming into the game, number 16, we don't actually have his number down on the court, on the live stats, which means there will be a mistake somewhere along the way. We'll try and get his name done as soon as we can for you here. As we see a bucket there, so Finlay Grell a little bit of the flex and we're still going to try and find out who number 16 is for you. He's obviously not showing up on the live stats. So hopefully he... They'll just need to know so that they can change the number there for him. So I believe his name may be Oraki Rupini. I do spot at the score bench... You're just having a look at the iPad. Yes, so the, the, yeah. that'll be the... I mean, the problem is, we like, these aren't the uniforms which Hillmorton normally wears. Yeah. Game was preloaded for their normal uniforms, and then it's... Yeah. yeah, obviously, we need to get them in the iPad for the school bench, but then also onto the live sets, and that's what we're going off to try and get the names and numbers. So hopefully that does get, get corrected pretty soon. And you might remember as well, James, the... A, uh, a stoppage in play due to someone not being on the score sheet in the, yes. the last year's yep. Thompson Trophy yep. final. Well, there's been NBL games this year where a player's been, he's on the, the pre-game list, like this is who's playing the game, warming up in the game, get in the game, then, oh, 
we didn't actually check this properly and he's not on the official official sheet so it's a it's one of those things that I will say if he's on the on the iPad if he's on the live sets under a different number that's definitely fine but if he's on one of the two I'd, I'm willing to say that's okay here. yeah totally except in last year's Thompson Trophy final that was actually my fault well, that was your fault <laughs> right who was it that it, Matthew that Lewis he only got a little bit of game time didn't he and then <laughs> I think he got a rebound yeah <laughs> yeah it's one of those it's one of those things you hate being the person responsible for it and I mean the advice I have regarding that is if you're a player once it's you know all entered just go and check and make sure you're on it so you know for sure that you're definitely okay don't rely on your coaches to get it no, right no exactly and I mean the other thing with the iPads is I try and lock them after each team's done it so that that one you know that roster is set but yeah. You know, if you don't get there in time, there it's very easy to hand it to someone else, and they accidentally click. This person's now inactive. When you know you had actually done everything right. Yeah. Anyway, a bit of dribble handoff, weave action here, well defended by Helmorden, and really well defended as Tahiti jumps in front of that one, steals the ball all the way to the rim. Two points for Chucky. Luca Kenny looking for someone to give the ball up to there. And he does find Jack Howard, secondary guard, I think, after Kate. Drive inside, good jump stop, and well defended there. And that was number 16, so he is on there, Sioli Asuaji. Or well, it might be Asaj. It was such a rush here, we haven't even had a chance to check. And we have first foul there, and that is a charge. And the foul call there against, I need to check the numbers just so I can see. I think it was against number six. So Archie Nijar, and he heads to the bench there. Foul number one for him, I think. The substitution's coming in just off the screen. It's just the name, just putting you on the spot here, Grocott Cup. Do you have any idea what the Grocott what, what that means or who it's named yeah, after. you know, no idea. It's okay. been something I've wanted to know all season. Okay, well, if you go onto our Canterbury basketball page, so John Grocott, life member, and he was basically one of the key people in starting up high school basketball here in Canterbury, the, the Friday night competitions, and obviously that's grown and grown, and, you know, Basketball New Zealand, he's done heaps of that refereeing, had an absolutely booming voice, passed away just a couple of years ago. But his son, we checked with the family, his son's actually the principal at Shirley Boys High, so he's coming down here um, and going to be helping present the tr you know, the, the first ever winners of the Grocott Trophy here at the end of today's game. So, yeah, we were trying to think of who's, you know, someone that would be well-deserving to have a, a competition in the high school space named after him. And, yeah, it wasn't a particularly long conversation yeah. to come up with, yeah, for sure. with John Grocott. So first free throw there, good. Is that Louis Tupuola? Yep. Makes them both. And we have substitution There's coming substitution. in. Jackson Grace looks to be coming in. Josh Shanahan taking a quick break after four minutes of play. Yeah, both teams, not particularly, you know, they're pretty happy to cycle people in and out, which is good. Like this age group especially. Yes, Toby Langrell just almost suckered Kearney into that foul there and you got him on his hip and just sort of made him stick to him then <laughs> yeah it's, it's a bit different to the senior stuff where yeah. you can be like right year 13s and year 12s you guys are going to play a lot year 11 not much year 10s and 9s uh, if you're in the team you're probably not going to see yeah. the court very often at all as Langrell hits the jumper but here in this competition it is just year and 9s and 10s so the expectation will be that virtually everyone gets a, a reasonable amount of time on yeah. the court. And it's quite good as well, obviously leading into the South Island tournament yes. coming up in Dunedin, yep. which is perfect for this for this grade. Luca gets the rebound, can't make it fall, but tied ball. Yeah, Assage and Tupuola tied up and it will stay with Hillmore. And we remember the jump ball there, Christ College just got it straight off the opening tip two points to go but it's been a bit more Hillmorden since then 11 to 6 the scoreline after that initial two yeah that was the other thing we wanted this tournament set up for to 
you know, the first year you know is always going to be the hardest. Great dub down pass there. Langrell to Assage, I think, there. We wanted to see, we've been asked a couple of times by BVNZ, like, how do these, because there isn't as much seeding in that competition. It's quite often teams that weren't there the last year and now they are this year. So quite often asking, how does this team stack up? And we've had to say, I don't really know, because we've got our under-15 competition, which some year 9 and 10 teams entered. Other ones put those players up into the under-17 competition. So by having a, and then we obviously have club teams as well, which can be from a combination of schools. So said, starting this competition, that's been a way. Great drive there, Fully Arvin makes the bucket. The bump from Kate, I think, or he's appealing someone else not particularly happy about it so basket can't, counts for Fuiava it was 22 that draws that foul mm. so that is a key foul to be concerned about if, if he picks up another couple I think it is only his first though but and having said that you'd, you'd much rather be on zero than one yeah 100% <laughs> uh, Drew Edmondson has just checked into the game the number 50 they're on screen actually uh, he's Checked in for Bruno Kearney. Fuiava tries to drive again. Langrell wide open for three. Just a little bit off and here's Kate with the ball. So he just turns straight away, pushes up the left hand side. Great strong nice defence there. It was a good strong move as well but a little bit short. And Fuiava gives it up to Langrell. He goes just probing a little bit here. Draws the defence, finds wide a open. shooter in the corner and that is a bit too strong and there's probably their second best rebound there, rebounder there Maxwell Stewart Finlater clearly number one in the rebound department for Helmorden Foyava the spin and he is denied sent right back to Paola just stuffs that one grabs it Kate takes a bit of contact throws it up thinking he was going to get a whistle but rebound there for Stewart Foyava passed the defence a little bit too strong so early nerves here Stewart though the the hustle and that's what he can do hand in the passing lane just picks that one off and Hillmore would have a chance to add to their five point lead and then Grell decides I'm going to add three points to this and Ooh. Coach Higgins straight away says right I've had enough of this a timeout right now guys we've got to stop the bleeding here we've got to get rebounds and we've got to look after the ball Hillmorton just moved the ball so well. Yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, the probably the only criticism I've had was they had two guys that didn't even look at the hoop. They just got the ball and like, I'm swinging this ball straight away over to Langrell. And I think he got in and was like, well, there's nothing else really happening. I'm okay open. I'm not open open, but I'm going to shoot this three because we're starting to run out of time and just drained it. But yeah, Coach Higgins, I think, will be, you know, A, we've got to get stops. B, we've got a rebound, and then C, we've got to be careful of the ball. Like, if we don't do all three of those things, we're just going to be in for a very, very long night. Yeah. What, what I'd, I'd, I'd imagine he would be talking about, you know, forcing them in, because they're forcing them in, first time around, yep. they're forcing them into not great shots, like not ideal shots uh, for their first ones, but then they get the rebound, yes. and they move the ball a little bit, and then they find great ones, and yep. then they sometimes hit them. Yeah, which is which is what I think Christ College will be looking to avoid, and, and that is probably the adjustment I think they're going to make. Yeah, it's um, it is hard because I mean if, if, there's only so many people at this level that you can really say right, we've got a key on this guy, <laughs> and unfortunately Hillmorton for Christ College has to be like right, we've really got to guard Toby Lingrell. Okay, we've also got to guard Junior Foy up. Oh, yeah. we've also got to guard Chucky Tahiri. We've got to be aware of where Finn Langrell is because yeah. he can shoot. And then We've got to keep the other two guys yeah. off the boards if they're out there. Like, yeah. And then meanwhile, don't let Josh get the rebound. Yes. Like, yeah, so it's a, it's a big ask. I think I think even for seniors, when, when it's not yeah. working out, it's a tough ask. Yeah, no, and this high school stuff, you can just really see it. Like, if you haven't been in these sort of situations, once it starts drifting away, it, it can be hard to get it back. And there was a great drive, just not quite finishing it. Kenny just about the rebound and Fuiava. He comes out of the pack with the ball here. Langrell thought about it. Fakes back to Fuiava. Stewart now with the ball up top. And so the older Langrell is having a short rest on the bench. That means Fuiava will be the key point guard for them. 
Kate, great defense there, sends that back. Three on the clock and the shot has to go up quickly. Wow. And I can tell from that chair, I was just looking at my notes, 23. I'd say he drilled a three there and then at the end of the shot clock. It's another drive here, this time. Through Edmonton. Yeah, made sure of it. Good balance here, all the way to the rim and then just going up strong. So I think Kate, a very good matchup against Foyava. Defense sucks in a little bit. There's the floater, no good, and Luca Kenny there. Great rebound from the big man. Kate, he draws four defenders, and not this time for Edmondson, not quite able to make it. Foyava pushing it up against there. Kate, great hands, slides in front, steals it. He's got a two on two here. And that is going to be a two-shot foul, I think. You can see there, number three, Wadakai Rupini, just stepping forward into the path there of Kate. I should have actually made sure that was what the call was, not just what <laughs> I would have called. But I can see Kate is lining up for free throws here, so I, was, I did announce that correctly, or commentate that correctly. So two shots for the, the younger Kate. I will... Also point out, an alum of Waitakere Primary School. Mm. Have to say, back-to-back -back Year 5 and 6 <laughs> champions. Not this season, but the previous two. So, um, yeah, possibly one of the, um, yeah, just a number of players. My sons, Joel Jeffrey, the Russ Hoffmans have gone there. Wow. Um, last night's MVP in the Thompson Division 2, Tyler Salkeld, also a former student from there. And then, obviously, E. Hucker Kate and Tafiti Kate, both from there. So, um if, you, if you're involved in primary school basketball and all that, man, we're just not really having the success that we want. Um, yeah, Waitakere High Primary School, go have a look at just the number of teams that they enter and the, the practice skill sessions that they have at lunch times just for all their players, and I, I think that's the key oh, part. Wow. Great pass to Hedy, to Toby Langrell. And it's just looking pretty clinical at the moment for Helmorton. Kate over to Kenny here. Dribble handoff into the corner. Charlie Burns has, has that. Dishes yeah. it to Tafri Kate. We are Kenny. Draws two defenders at the moment. They're just not really able to find a huge amount of space. Good screen. Kate gets it, but a second too late. He knew there was virtually no time. And I mean, it's it's one of those things. You've got to you've got to make people commit to you and then really attack hard. There's no point just moving the ball if you never actually make defense commit. Here's Tahiri up around half time, 54 seconds to go in the first quarter. He gives the hand off to Finlater, Finlater drives into trouble, makes the bucket though. And that is a key foul there, that'll be number two I think if it's called against Kenny. It is, yeah. And from our angle, it was pretty hard to see, like, if he did bump him off with the hand. It almost looked like, I was going to say Finlater just, he picked the wrong path. There were two guys there, but he somehow got the angle exactly right to force them into a really compromising position here. Makes the bucket. He's shooting one now. And I think another big point is that subs Luca Kenny out of the game. Yeah, so it is foul number two, I think, for him. Finlater no good on that. Tipo Ola though, he's played well yeah. as well. It doesn't have quite the, the height and I guess the speed is Kenny. But definitely a big man capable of screening, rebounding, defending at the rim. And you can see here just a little bit of miscommunication, getting in each other's way. Langrell loses it for a moment but it will stay with Helmorden. 20 seconds on the shot clock here. 28 on the game clock. We'll try and just lift the key. Here we go. The camera's going up a tiny bit so you can see it at the top of the top of the backboard there and so far you'll feel pretty happy if you're a fan of the Tigers in red Langrell the fake finds no he can't get everyone to jump at the same time so has to <laughs> give it up Langrell rejects the screen pull up jumper off to the left and Ihaka Cape with the rebound sorry Tafiti Cape with the rebound there 10 seconds to go here Tupawola he's a take steps right past JJ Finlay, a nice finish there. Four on the shot, four on the game clock here. Two, one. Langrell knows it from halfway and just about drops in. 
So end of the first quarter, the Hillmorton Tigers up 25 points to 15. Christ College probably feeling okay to only be down 10 points here. We'll be back in a couple of couple of moments here. At Lincoln, we will seek to ensure that future generations can grow and thrive. That means providing a world-class learning environment to grow fresh solutions to real-world problems, including using the world's resources wisely and sustainably. Come to Lincoln University, a place to grow. CT, there we go. Welcome back. Quarter number two of the NZCT Grocott Trophy competition, just about to tip off. James Lissaman along here with Rani Hammond will be commentating the rest of this game here. I'm not going to say the rest of the night. I will be involved in all three games. And as long as everyone else is okay, I've managed to sort it so that I, <laughs> I'm only caught side on the second game instead of having multiple roles. So, what, what have you seen the first quarter here from Christ College, especially? that's caused them to have this 10 point deficit and what do they need to do? Yeah I think I think uh, mostly for me I think that what I'd be telling this team is is we've got to get the rebound after the yep. first shot. Uh, I think I, I wouldn't know for sure but I, I would say a fair number of Hill Morden's points have come from second chances when they've got their own offensive rebound and and they've sort of punished Christ College for that a little bit. I've just checked there, you're exactly right. Eight. Yeah, eight, eight points and Christ College. Yeah. Not eight, not seven, six, five, four, three, two, or one. Zero points yeah. off second chance. So yeah, I mean if you're exactly right, if they stop them, this would be a seventeen yeah. point to eighteen yeah. game here. But th but then as well, I mean, who knows how many points with those extra rebounds Christ yeah. College may have scored as Correct. well. So yeah. If you just take them away completely, it's a it's a two point game. Yeah. Um, so that would be that would be my biggest my biggest comment. Yeah. So leading scorers in the game, Toby Langrell, seven points for Helmorden. You know, no surprise there. Member of the under 15 first team here for Canterbury basketball. So here he is going against Tafiti Kate, who launches a three there, no good. Teammates on the under 15 national team and then leading scorer off the bench for Christ College number six, uh, it's Louis Tupuola. He had that nice drive right at the th at the end of the quarter there. He's on six points for them. Here's Langrell out to Tahiti and I was gonna say that looked perfectly online. Drills another three, so well, I mean there's no rebounds if they're drilling threes, I guess. And tough drive and finish. Ball I think will stay here with Christ College, it does. And Josh Shanahan, I feel like he's been out for a while here. Doesn't have any fouls, so he's got a chance to... I know he's been sick for a while, I think, or did he have a broken bone? He missed a number of games for something this year. And I can't remember if it was sickness or... I've, I've got a feeling it was a, a body injury for oh, a, wow. around about a month. And quick screen there. Tafiti Kate launches another three just off the back there. Finlater goes up and grabs that rebound for the Tigers. But there we go, Christ College... About the first time they've had a turnover in the backcourt there. Topawola hard to the rim and he likes to go right, he likes the contact and then nice balance there to finish at the end. And there's Finlater, nice deep catch there but too much contesting and good pass from Kate up ahead, the step through there so things suddenly going Christ College's way here. They've cut the lead down to nine points. But it feels like these last couple of positions have gone the way of the team in white. Here's Kate against Tahiti. And he gets another block there. And leads the pass up again. And I was going to say a little bit off balance. They've still got a chance. The spin and Finland growl. Not going to out jump anyone but he has very strong hands. Just reaches in and rips that one away. It's just like his dad like that. Yeah well feel like his dad at this point in time probably had a bit more size. <laughs> Tahiti, same spot, different result this time. And Tupuola grabs the rebound this time. Shanahan up the right-hand side. Pass one, pass two. He finishes at the rim, so 
all of a sudden the Helmholtz defence showing some gaps. Christ College scored three straight. Well, they had that one miss, sorry, they've scored three at the rim this quarter. Tahiti inside, Finlay to catch, inside, can't finish it. Tupuolo, another rebound, and here we go. Christ College, another chance to run. Nijar to the rim and just misses that. The follow up is good though. Jackson Grace. And I was going to say, I feel like the game is all of a sudden turned, and I would be expecting a timeout pretty soon. Mm. Just like that in two and a half minutes, the, the deficit has halved. Yeah, I mean, it was that 1 3 for Chucky Tahiti that was a really good shot. I think we've had one offensive rebound, maybe not even that, for Hill Morton since then, but it's been eight straight points all at the rim for Christ College as they've been able to just slide past players and, you know, almost just see how they're going to jump. Oh, no, they're not. Right, I'm going to go up and score these easy two points, and they had one which they missed as well. Mm. That does that does almost make me wonder how, how, how many of these points throughout the whole season really have for this Christ College team yep. have come through the fast break. Yeah. Because they, those were all just quick hit fast break layups and, and, fa and shots out of fast break situations. How would you stop that? Well, it's really, you know, how many people are you sending to the offensive glass and how aggressively are you going? Like, you know, we know the, the jamming philosophy in New Zealand is, I guess, you know, you've got to know that if you want to play in a New Zealand team. But it's, you really have to be smart. Like, have I actually got a realistic chance of getting the rebound here in which case yeah by all means go past the player but if you're wrong that means I've got a chance to leak out or are you going to say look I'm probably not going to get this anyway so I'm actually just going to push up to them and if they get the ball then I'm going to be right there and make it hard for them but you know we've seen the passes have been there and you know Christ College pretty much everyone on the team has been catching it turning and looking up the floor and seeing if there's someone else ahead of them and then they've just recognised is Helmorton ready to play defence and actually really put a body in front or are they just hoping I'm going to give the ball up? And the last couple of trips, it's been, no, nah, you can go to the room if you want to. I think it's also important for Hill Morden as well, just to keep the composure. Like, yep. They, they were up by 10, but they're still up by 5. <laughs> yes, yeah. No, but, I mean, it's a good time, especially the first half. Like, you don't have ones, you know, the last, you know, to advance the ball up the floor as Finlater loses the ball for a moment. This one misses, and Kate grabs the rebound. You can see just a little disappointed himself. And I can see both teams looking a little perplexed. No one seemed to know who that was on. <laughs> it will stay here with Christ College, though. I think the biggest thing, for, especially for young players, is, is when things don't go your way, it's yeah. okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, fine. that's why we play the game. Like, the other team wants to win as well. Like, yeah. You know, you don't want to just go out there and be, right, we've got a 100-2 to two game. Like... You want to have, well, you probably don't in the, you know, when you're actually playing, you're probably like, oh, I would have way rather we were up by 50 and there was no stress. Yeah. But afterwards, like these are the games, if you have a super tight game, the other ones which you value the most afterwards, Kate off the, the handoff there, can't make that. Offensive rebound, Shanahan off balance, and Finlay declares this one to Langrell. And Nijal, I think, was that him that was, yep. just jumping up to knock that one away. It's a good recognition there. You did get a chance to read my preview, but one of the players to watch. Not a bad pick for a player Well, to watch. it wasn't me that picked the way she asked Coach Huggins, <laughs> who do you reckon are the... Sorry, I keep thinking Coach Huggins from Bob Huggins. And, yes. Um, Coach <laughs> Higgins. Yeah, I did ask, like, who are the who are the ones you think is Finley Grell, a little bit flat on that. Kate up nice and high for that rebound. Nijar now pushing the ball up the right-hand side, and I think that's going to be a carry ball there. One of the ones that did get a little bit high, but mm. from our angle, we couldn't tell if the hand went underneath. It didn't look smooth, I guess. No. So yeah. um, that's possibly why he drew a whistle there. Langrell trying to direct traffic here. Good defense by Nijar on him. Here's Foyava. Probes into lane. Tough running shot there off the side of the backboard. Gets his own rebound inside. Close to a three second shot here. Three second call and said a foul there. And we'll see who this is called on. Mm. I've just seen Coach Higgins as well just remind his boys to rebound. Yeah. <laughs> Which uh, they, they started off in the quarter so perfectly, I think, with that. And yes. you just can't let that slip. It's got to be a, it's got to be for a full, full 10 minutes. And 
in this quarter is the so this discussion here, I imagine it is, is it shooting or is it from the baseline? Or is it a tie ball? Oh, no, they definitely called a foul yeah. against it. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Two shots Two here. Shots. So 35, Josh Shannon was whistled for the foul there, and that's foul number one for him. And the free throw is no good there for Maxwell Stewart. I think possibly he has a few rebounds. We'll just have a quick look at that. Oh, only two rebounds. I, I feel like he's always involved and in, in almost feel like I'd, I would have guessed he'd be on four or five <laughs> by this point. And there we go. Misses his free throw, <laughs> follows up and gets one. So he's on three, so he's halfway to where I thought he'd be. Finland Grail, the spin. Great defense Great from team. Nija. And he clears the rebound here as well. Just here looking a little unsure who's actually going to run the run the show for Christ College. Shanahan probes to the right, bounce pass to Nija, not a great position to give him the ball and Hillmorden swamps in, swarms in and grabs the steal there Langrell to Langrell and Finn Langrell drills a three there so it have been at five points for a while, now yeah. back up to eight yeah I think we were scoreless since that time out yes. until then we are Kate Some elevator screens yep yeah. And Shanahan, so three-point buckets have only been really going for one team. Mm. That team is 5 of 11. The other team is 0 of 5. And I think looking at the scoreboard, you can guess which one is which if you're only just joining us. So Finn Langrell loses the ball on the way up. 10 on the shot clock here. Toby Langrell in, takes the runner. That's short. Rebound taken by Nijar. He makes sure to hang on to possession here. And now he's pushing up the court. Foyava gets in front of him and we'll have a look at this. It's an offensive foul. Read that perfectly. Nija just saying, what was it? And Sandra French saying, hey, hit him in the chest. Did he move sideways or backwards and not forwards? Yes, yes, he did. Therefore, and then is there enough contact? Well, he hit the ground and I think it was because he displaced him, so it is a charge. I like the call. Actually. I do as yeah. well. So you know that, you know that Ronnie Hammond, a very good referee in his <laughs> younger days. Now he spends most of his time coaching, and it's only when we can beg him and really, really <laughs> need one. But if he's agreeing and he's a Christ College coach with one of their other teams, you know it's a good call. It's Fuyama to the rim there. I actually managed to get through the season through one game. Yep. <laughs> no, we need, you know, one of the things we need to have basketball played, well, we need players. We need the equipment, balls, courts. We need referees and we need coaches. So, I mean, if you asked me about seven years ago, what was our biggest issue? Court, court yeah. space. Um, but coaches have, you know, they've generally sort of grown as player and team numbers have grown. And currently I'd say referees and court space are our, you know, two things. We had to cap the number of male teams on our Saturday competitions. Um, you know, there's just too many people that want to play and we just don't have the resources to be able to, to give people a good experience. There's a Shanahan, great effort there to hang on to the ball and I think this is going to go against Stewart, just judging by his reaction. And we will see if it's a two point. So the foul is on 22 and it is two shots. Mm. So that was the main thing I wanted to see. Was he in the shooting motion yeah. or he, was he still just trying to grab possession of the ball there? So team fouls, only two team fouls apiece. I think, interestingly as well, James, is we, we talked about how a, a, a three-point shot was the first bucket since <coughs> since that uh, since the timeout. But still, since the timeout, yep. Christ College have remained scoreless. Yes, you're right. They they scored those eight points. Helmorden. They've just really struggled. Big rebound there from Kenny over the top. Just. Can't make it. Tupuola, he grabbed it in Hanham. He goes in, grabs the ball at the end. Dangerous pass up to Fuiava, but it gives him a chance to push it up on the break. Shanahan cuts him off nicely, though. Stewart swings it around to Tahiri. Here's the ball screen for him against Kate. Switch and Kenny. He's going to say, you can see he's in a, a pretty poor position there. Should have just kept moving his feet to stay in front. Luckily, it's on, on Louis. It is like this. Louis probably a little unlucky to get whistled for that one. He was, mm. I felt like doing a better job just trying to retreat and stay vertical there. Mm. But, you know, if Kenny, 
you know, you can recognise off that handoff, it's probably going to go and attack the opposite direction. Just really slide your feet, try and get your chest in front and force them to shoot over you. Yeah, missed free throw there for Tahiti. Another member of the Canterbury Basketball Under-15 first team, just voted by all the coaches in the, yeah. in the grade there. And misses both of them. And too early there, Stuart. Well, I thought he was early the last time when he got his own rebound. Oh, no, it he wasn't, wasn't early. It, it wasn't was him. Shanahan. I thought they were saying you were too early. Maybe it's blood that he has. Ooh, yeah. Finland Grell coming into the game instead. So Tahiti, he has a chance to shoot another free throw here. <coughs> and does make that one. So officially one of two there, despite <laughs> shooting three free throws. Here's Shanahan, the drive left. Hanham goes in, Travel. catches him, and whistled for the travel there. I thought it was a nice little finish at the end there. Mm. I think just slid his pivot foot there as he was getting through the two defenders. Uh, yeah, I think, I think there's a fair argument to say that was a... That was a travel. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I, I wasn't watching his feet. That's normally yeah. what it was. Yeah, and here's Fuiava with the ball going up against Jackson Grace. Nice bit of pressure there. And Aswaj back to Fuiava. No, no space there to get it. Kenny grabbed the rebound, gave it up dangerously to Kate. Grace threw a bit of contact there at the rim. And Tahiti grabs the ball. Shanahan whistled for another, another foul, so all of a sudden he's picked up two now as well. That'll take him out of the game as well, so Drew Edmondson is in. And I mean, that one there, possibly a foul. For me as a referee, I'm like, well, he's on the line, so I'm actually just going to call out of bounds and yeah. say you're out of bounds touching the ball, so. I normally just give it the tied ball. and Yeah, well, you can't have a tied ball if you're setting out of bounds though, right? I think you can if two people have the ball and one of them's out of the bounds. Oh, out of bounds here. Yeah. Right, well. I think. You did say you only refereed one game, but I yeah. can't say I can say I do not have any idea you could be right then. I'll check my phone later, someone yeah. will tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, maybe half time we can <laughs> we can check that up. Anyway, Kate after that bucket, so Hillmorton pushing up, up thirteen now. The runner no good and Tahiti with the rebound. And you can see just here at the back of the the court there, number 50, Drew Edmondson, really struggling. Mm. He actually wanted to sub earlier in that position yeah. there, but the shot was too quick for the referees to recognise that he needed to go out. And coming into the game for him, number 10, Bruno Kearney. Kearney, probably. And Finn Langrell here at the free throw line, shooting two. So yeah, it was that, that was that fantastic start, wasn't it? It was 25 to 15, give up a three, score the next eight points, and then, yeah, we have not seen the scoreboard move for Christ College since then. And both free throws are good for Langrell. Substitution coming in for Hillmord in here. Yeah, so a, a 10 to nothing run since the since the timeout. You'd be pretty happy with that one. Yes, You'd be pretty happy. You would. So Arthur Cole, number 23, you'll see him here on the screen. There he is, right under the hoop there, getting back into the game for Hillmorton. So all 10 of their players have played. Three-point shot off to the left there. Rebound there, good strong rebound from Grace. He gets the kick out, open three, and this one banks. So hopefully that turns things around a little bit. Ooh. Jack Howard makes three for the Christ College team. Ball gets swung, Langrell to Langrell here. Pull up mid-range jump shot, in, out, and back in. So a good answer there from Toby Langrell. 40 to 26 to score now. Two minutes to play. Ihaka Kate, he swings it. Grace, another three launch. Another back three. Is. And a bit of full court pressure showing here. Just needing to change some things. Langrell though, unconcerned with it. Gives the ball up to Tahiri. He hesitates, drives in. Draws a crowd, Assage back up here to Langrell. Crossover, Chucky Tahiri, drive, floater too strong. Ball gets knocked out of bounds. 
There should be a shot clock violation here, but I see the bench. Oh, it's been reset. I think they're really lucky to have that on 14. That went right over the top there. Langrell misses, so I guess it ends up with the, the way it should go, but Luke and Kenny, I think at halftime I'll be saying, once you get a rebound, you really have to make sure you can make that pass. Here we go again. Grace. No well, it looked like he was trying to bank that one as well. Good. Here's Toby Langrell just pushing it, drawing a bit of contact to cut off the defender here. Tahiti, the dribble handoff. That goes back to Arthur Cole, back to Tahiti. In, out. Toby Langrell fake. Drive in. You can see there just, he changes angles, changes speeds, and it's just really, I guess, surprising the defence. They're not ready to deal with that. And you can see at the top of the clock there, Shot clock 14, but the game clock 53 seconds here in the first half to go. And it does feel like Christ College. Things, they've had the bank threes, but it hasn't really been, you know, from what you'd like to see. You'd want to see them just go straight in and really feel like we've started to hit shots that we need to make. Toby Langrell, he misses the second. Tahiti, though, the rebound. Strong move inside and makes the bucket there. 43-29 now. So it seems like just when Christ is starting to push back in and, and get a bit more of momentum, Hillmorden has a great answer. Another three. This one drops straight down. So there we go. Those were the ones that we said needed to start happening. Lead cut back down to 11 now. Len Grau swings it to Tahiti. Into the lane. He's throwing the pass. And Kate knew where that was looking for. Chance to hold for the final shot here. Inside 20 seconds, he's pushing though. Kenny grabs the ball and it gets tipped. So no one's sort of taking control here to say we've got to use a bit more time. Kate shoots with seven on the clock. Hillmorton, Langrell knows it though. He sees three on the clock here. Shot clock here, two. Throws it up and just a heave there. And that is going to be really disappointing for Coach Higgins there. At the buzzer, drew the foul. And now he's shooting three free throws. So I mean, that's a coach killer, isn't it? That's why you say, like, I don't care if we don't score. Yep. We cannot let the other team score. And this is probably the worst way, like, giving yep. up, fouling someone, just throwing a desperation three at the end of the half. Oh, we got two. Well, there is a, a query here. It was definitely behind the three-point arc. So, I, and I, I, we are in the, the bonus. Maybe it, it was is, on the floor. Yeah. So we will just try and have a look at the referees here, just on the screen. So that's what the discussion is: is was it a shooting foul or was it on the floor? I mean, the thing is, if it was a shooting foul, then uh, you know, I know the rules shot. have changed. Like you meant to have time left. If it was on the floor, there definitely has to be time on the mm. clock. Yes. But if it was shooting then, I think you could say he was in the shooting motion. Yeah. I can see Peter Crowen. I couldn't see if he was signalling it should be two or three. So so we... Yeah, for, for those who are a little unsure, if he was in the act of shooting with time on the clock and he yeah. got fouled, he would have three shots yeah. because he was outside the three-point line. If it was deemed he wasn't in the, in the act of shooting, Christ College... We're in the bonus. Yep. So they'd only get the two, and it looks like it looks like Toby Langrell wasn't in the act of shooting. Yeah, I mean, Dave Langrell is saying like he, he threw the ball towards the hoop, like he knew there was no time on the clock. Like, so I'm just gonna we're gonna we're not gonna close for half time yet because it's not. 100% clear. I think that the clock has started. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think we're pretty safe to say it's definitely half time now. So anyway, we'll step away for a couple of minutes here. We'll be back in about three and a half minutes time. Hillmorden up by 10 points, 44 to 34, exactly the same margin at the end of two. James Lissom and Ronnie Hammond stick around. We'll be back very soon.
At Lincoln, we will seek to ensure that future generations can grow and thrive. That means providing a world-class learning environment to grow fresh solutions to real-world problems, including using the world's resources wisely and sustainably. Come to Lincoln University, a place to grow. All right, welcome back. Third quarter just about to get underway here. Hillmorton Tigers up 44 against Christ College. They're on 34 points here. James Lissman joined by Rani Hammond. So I guess a, a game of a, a couple of runs here. Christ College, probably more mistakes than Hillmorton, hence the 10 point lead. But certainly you feel like they did a couple of things where you'd be confident they can get back into this game and make it, make it a pretty contested one towards the end. I think as well, some credit needs to go to that Christ College team for just trusting their three-point shot yep. for that whole half. And what it's, it didn't rain. It started pouring down uh, at the end there. How many did they hit? Yeah, well, they, they were 0 of 5 because I remember we talked about it. Ended up 3 of 9, so they hit 3 of their last 4 after starting off. Um, not great, we'll say. Mm. Hillmorton, they were 5 of 11, now 5 of 12, so they only had one more since that, that one there. And great job there by Langrell to get in, and that was like the steal that Kate had earlier in the game, he got him back this time. Just a little gimpy hopping up, Ooh. and that's, um, yeah, I make my kids wear the padded knee pads. <laughs> I wish I'd worn them when I was younger. And the good thing is a lot of NBA players wear them now, so it's not like, <laughs> hey, I'm the only person who's ever doing it, but I'm just like, you want to be able, confident hitting the ground, going for loose balls, and you don't want to have, um, Damage to your knees is Shanahan. That three looked almost, they looked really good. Just missed that, and Finn later grabs the rebound. Turns Kenny's got to be careful not to get suckered into a ball, and there we go. Shanahan, perfect position there. 
Finlater just tried to go right to him and it went right through him. And that's pretty much identical to the, the charge that was called down here. Second quarter, just the teams have been reversed. So no. key stats, if we do look at the points scored, so three double-figure scorers for Helmorden. Toby Langrell, 13 points. Chucky Tahiri with 11. And then Finn Langrell has 10 points. Mm. Well, then for Christ College, it's a lot more even the spread there, the scoring. Their leading scorer is Louis Tupuola. He has eight points. Jackson Grace has seven but yeah, no one really, really lighting it up. And you will feel quite good if you're at Christ College that Junior Fuiava hasn't been able to... He hasn't really just started bombing away. Here he is, launches that three, and that looked pretty good, but it's way too deep. But Langrell gets the ball, and it's just going to... It could have been carry on. It was a shot clock violation. Luca Kenny was there. I guess he'd probably like this, like at least now he's got plenty of time to make sure the person I want to pass to is open rather than trust, just trying to rush it. So Shanahan, the dribble handoff to Nijar. Nice kind of drag step Ooh. into the lane and then a little floater there to finish. So eight points the margin now. That's actually something him and his brother do very well, the floater. Yep. Yeah. His, Archie's brother, Aston, who's playing tonight in the Thompson Trophy final. Um, they've both done that ever since they started high school. Yeah, so, like, it's not a Euro, but it's, no. it's a... It's just a shot that, yeah. that can freeze the defence and yeah. then you've got the time. Anyway, here's Langrell just... Basically is so good at suckering people into fouls. Mm. Like, you know, he gets the, the person who's trying to slow him up the court into a compromised position. He sort of locks him behind him. And then he just, he doesn't go super fast, but he doesn't let them get back in front. And then the other def defenders is, here's a, a turnover from Nijar. Kenny's like, Nijar's like, I've got to pass it back to you. Kenny, I think, is, will be saying, no, 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 my job is not to dribble the ball up. I give the ball to you, and then I get out of the way, and someone else will be there. Mm. I'm sure we'll see the next time Helmut impresses if which one of those two is right. There's the screen for Asage. Toby Langrell kicks it out to Tahiri. Very good three-point shooter, but that one is very short. Asage, rebound, no good. Shanahan, he grabs the ball this time. And here's Kate looking to push the ball up the left-hand side. Into the middle, Langrell finds him. Open three here, that one's a bit long. Saved, but Nijar right there misses the follow-up. So unlucky there for Christ College. That would have cut the lead down to seven. Tahiri into the lane here. Step, great defense there from Nijar. And Kate with the rebound. And there, now he's got, he's gone past three defenders. Kenny, great pass there. Shanahan the cut. Kenny set up the screen perfectly there for Kate. And Shanahan, what timing on that cut there. Here we go, Toby Langrell now. And he finds Fuiaba, Finn Langrell. One, two, three defenders, and it's going to be hard to finish there. Giving up almost a foot in height, I think, against Kenny, and he did a good job staying in front. Nijar went to the rim, a bit of contact there, not able to finish. Here's Fuiava. Passes it ahead, Toby Langrell now. Stops, pops that one, drills it. It's Christ College, I think. Probably four points went begging there. Could have been 47-42. Great finish this time, Kenny. And the timeout is taken, I think, by Helmorden. They'll be okay, like, scoring-wise. We're up by seven, still pretty good. But you've got to be saying we were really lucky that it's not actually 47-44 now. I, I think as well, one thing that I think makes this team and this that whole program at Helmorden great is the, the high, expect, high expectations yep. of Dave Langrell. He, he has very high expectations. No, and the other thing is, like, because my kids have been involved with some of the stuff he's he's been coaching as well under thirteens last year. Like, he teaches them how to play the right way. Like, obviously, you know, like JJ Finlater, you're going to be more about rebounding. And we're wanting you to run the ball, you know, run the lane and try and catch the ball near the rim because he's. I'm going to try and get him to play American football as well. He's very good at finding the ball, whatever shoulder and right behind him but it's you know he can dribble as well he, he's encouraging the guys they've all got to learn how to move how to guard how to rebound just basic 
basketball understanding and fundamentals and that's why they've been able to knock off teams that are far far bigger than them in the you know in this competition and in the under 15 competition these players you know of course what's the number one what do you reckon the number one most important skill is in basketball or oh, it depends who you ask I, it depends who okay, you ask well, I, I feel that it, it's shooting like that's the you can yeah. you know you can be average 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 yeah. exceptional at this and people are going to say right we need that guy in the team or that girl in the team and you know he has these guys all work on their shooting he said these they've had games where they've hit like I think 8 out of 10 threes in a, in a you know set period of time which he just said like you can't bank on that every time but he said like it's really cool to see when that happens because it proves that the work we've been doing on the shooting is helping our guys and you know it pays dividends every so often and here we are dribble handoff they were looking for that sort of hyper screen there into a down screen into a handoff and Langrell tough shot there good job by Price Collis just to get up make it really hard hands up high Shanahan hounded by Langrell from behind finds Kate decides not to shoot a great pass inside and ball is lost out of bounds play here for Christ College oh or is it yeah, yeah, yeah like Hell Morton was like <laughs> it's going to be ours four of the Christ College players were lined up <laughs> like we're running our out of bounds play and Kate was like oh I don't think it's ours but it is yeah, Shanahan drives, good strong defence there. He loses the ball out of bounds, and the referee's just checking with each other. Was that tipped out of bounds? Our angle's even worse than theirs. I thought he just dribbled it out of bounds. Referee's conferring here to see. Uh, looks like, <laughs> reading body language, that was tipped out of bounds, but... Mm. Or maybe it was... I, I don't know, I have no idea. I have no idea. I think... If you're forcing me to make a decision, I'd say it was off his leg out of yep. bounds. But we are, yeah, closest side if you're, you're seeing the screen on TV here. So we were by far the worst as Toby Langrell, the three, a little bit stronger rebound there for Amnesia. Kate now a chance to push it. Good pass up to Kenny. Gets the ball knocked away and then Tahiri, he's just sort of reading when he's going to look to pass. Picks that one off really quick tough shot here good challenge from Shanahan and he comes up with the rebound great defensive position there Shanahan loses the footing there for Iava good defense Kate behind what the bag move. makes the bucket there so 47 42 five point game now it's the defense from Christ College stepping up and there's a foul there 43 Charlie is Burns. He's just saying, I'm not sure what I'm, you know, like he's beaten me, he's past me. I'm just trying to catch up and he's kind of locking me off and holding. I'm not. That's that's not the first time we've seen Toby Langrell, I mean, even in this game, force yeah. a defender into that yes. foul, is it? So, no, it's not. It's, yeah. You've got to be, like, if you beat him by him, you, you can't run right next to him where he's able to sort of lock you in and get you stuck on his hip. You have to, to pick a new angle and get your chest back in front or switch on to someone else. Is Tahiri to the room, a nice sort of scooping layup there. Lead back up to seven points now for Hillmorton. Nijar, the quick cross, and just not able to finish that, but Tupuola, strong rebound, and he lost the ball, but he lost it directly to Shanahan. It's an assist. It's an assist, <laughs> if you say so. I'm going to bring up the play-by-play -play <laughs> just to see what the official stats say for that. I think the ball was tipped behind him. <laughs> and Shanahan just right place right time <laughs> scores the two point bucket to make it 49 40, 44 here and if he makes this it'll only be a four point four point game he doesn't but Nija rebound brings it down though giving the defence a chance to tie him up and that's just what they do Christ College the rebound mm. sorry the inbound opportunity here so 14 on the shot clock they do set the, up the out of bounds play here so up screen on both sides and quick shot as he's drifting back no good Tahiti picks up the rebound and you're right live set officially credited with an assist <laughs> so, so there we go Tupuola I think you were lucky there but hey it's official now and it's not up to us to no. decide anyway Fuyava off the potential assist from Toby Langrell 
And rebound grab there, number three, Orakai Rupini. Holding foul, it is going to be baseline here. So Hillmorton, they'll run there out of bounds play. Finland Grell about to re-enter the game. Five-point lead, just under five minutes to play here in the third quarter. There's a diagonal back screen there. Not really open for Foyava. Langrell, good defense. Christ College Nijar was there. And Tupuola just says, I am taking this. You are not going to steal it off the dribble. Foyava just about did off the pass. And then what a bullets pass. it into Shanahan. In and out. Nijar drains it. Two point game now. That was just good basketball. That was. Like that, that pass inside to Shanahan was fantastic. And then he was really quick. Here's Langrell, the answer off. No, it's not off. That was, it looked like it was slightly off to the right, but what an answer from Toby Langrell. Charlie Burns, no good. Tupuola saves it, but Fuiava goes, picks it up. Kate gets crossed up a little bit. He's back on. Here's Fuiava, nothing to do there. Langrell grabs it. Just trying to just force it. It's a bit hard to score inside the paint. And the Christ College guys have been told, do not jump them when Langrell's in there. He's just going to try and fake. Use his bulk and his muscle to score. As Kate scores the bucket there. We had Shanahan. Well, Shanahan and Toby Langrell both on the ground. I think what happened is Shanahan got pushed and he <laughs> fell over into Langrell. I don't know if it was a Christ College player or a Hillmorton player that pushed, pushed Shanahan, but it was definitely... The two guys that were on the ground, it was not intentional by either of them. The Christ College supporters really letting themselves be heard. Yeah, Fuiava lost it. There is a kickball there, and it will go to Christ College. Save was, I think it was from Christ College, so it was a dangerous place to try and save the ball there under your own basket. So 52 49, 317 to go here third quarter of action here and then NZCT a Grocott trophy named after John Grocott passed away recent well passed away a couple of years ago but key person in the growth of high school basketball is that drive is good Tipawola left hand side of the basket still wants to drive with his right though and he has been very strong finishing the ball around the rim here I think that he's, that he's up to 10 points, 9 rebounds now, and a chance to make it 11 if he hits this. But more important than the points, it, it's a chance to tie the game at 52 apiece. No good, but Shanahan picks it up and he's sent back. Finlater jumps up and just denies that one. So I guess if you miss the box out, you better make up for it, and that's what he did there. Foyava into the lane. One, two, three defenders. Gets it up, and I think that was affected by Tupola. That was affected by Kate, but it was a foul there. Yeah. See, the, the, the issue there for me, watching this in the eyes of Christ College, yep. you might not agree with the foul, yep. but you gave up three rebounds. Yeah. You, if, you, if you box out, if you like, box out, eliminate the rebound com entirely, yep. then you get away without a foul. And yep. It's 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 a tough it's a tough one. Isn't yeah, it? I know. Like the commentator, in me, I love blocks. Like because yes. you're jumping in, it's exciting and that's really cool. The coach of me, constantly telling my guys, don't jump for blocks because then you're out of rebounding position and you know you, you're going to make them miss most of the time. If they're going to miss, they're probably going to miss if you just stand still and stay steady as well. So yeah, so I'm I'm torn here. So am I. It just depends, coach or commentator, as to what we want to see. <laughs> Anyway, Shanahan, Kate loses the ball. Here's Langrell. Kate hustling to get, and you can see what we talked about there earlier, like picking that angle to get your chest back in front. He does that. Great defense there by Kate against Langrell. Switching out. He's got Fuiava now. Not great spacing here from Hillmorton. All on one side of the court. Shanahan into the brick wall of Tupuola. And he has whistled for the blocking foul there. And that's one of those ones, I mean, it, me, if I'm the referee, I'm not calling that. I didn't have the best angle. If I'm the referee from halfway, I should say, not the referee on the court, 
it looked to me like he was sliding backwards chest like I don't think he hit his leg so I think it was right in the center of the chest was there enough contact to call the charge I don't think so he's <laughs> had a couple of bank free throws last night and Finlaters maybe he was watching them because there were a number that went in so he he shoots the free throw off the backboard there in well, I think you'll find as well another issue for Christ College that may come to bite them at the end of the fourth at the end of the fourth if they are in range yeah they're, they're foul discipline. They've been yeah. in the bonus every single quarter, and that, that's a real issue come the end of the game. Well, they're on 18 team fouls. Hillwarden only nine. Yeah. But, I mean, a number of it is, you know, like, Christ College, I mean, there was, you can see there guys are standing and their arms are straight up. Like, it's you're less likely to be called for a foul if your hands are up than if your hands are out to the side. But it is sort of... Hillwarden looking to attack the paint constantly, then kick it out and see if they can keep on doing that. And, you know, the the offensive rebounds just make it hard to sort of stay disciplined as well. As you can see there, Toby Langrell going to the bench. Chucky Tahiri coming in. And Assage, he comes in as well. Says cross screen, the defence is ready for that. Shanahan well cut off there by Nija. Assage. Fuyama just freezes and what a finish there like the in and out hezzy crossover finish with the left hand just so smooth there and then he picks off the pass there from Kate two on two here Nija backs up Kate tries to challenge him but Fuyama he's been quite a lot and then just two just outstanding buckets there from the young man and that shot has not been well that spot has not been kind to Christ College Shanahan rebound finish yeah Charlie Burns had a couple of open threes from that corner and they've all gone a bit far as Finlater loses the handle so it looked like it was drifting away but here comes Christ College and there goes Christ College loses the ball to Finlater, Finlater draws the foul I think yeah, on I think it's, too. yeah 35 so I believe number three for him. We'll try and have a look at the score bench. And Shanahan goes to the bench. Not the word, you know, three fouls. As long as he doesn't pick up any dumb ones in the fourth quarter, he should be able to play as much as you need him to. Yeah. The big issue, as you said, foul discipline in the bonus every quarter. And Finn later at the line. We'll see if he banks this one in. <laughs> Boom. How many commentator free throw things do you have saying, I'm expecting a bank free throw to go in and then it happens? <laughs> I reckon he'll just try and nail this one straight up here. No, the bank oh, as well. <laughs> so, clearly on purpose. <laughs> here we go, 61-53. Last minute of action here in the third quarter. And the Hillmont and Tiger fans now starting up the defence chart. Kate swings it, Tupuola. Hard into contact, just shoves him out. Well, not shoves him, just bodies him out of the way. Makes the finish at the rim for Yava. Kate tries to challenge that, does make it a bit harder shot. Nija chased from behind. And now Kate with the ball. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 27 on the game clock. The three goes up. Short, Finlater with the rebound. So Hillmorton, they can hold it for one here. Leg Rao pushes it up. No one's really looked up or taken control here. Tahiti, the quick pass. Finlay to the three. <coughs> it's deep, so mistake there strategically by Helmorden. Five seconds on the clock here. Kate, you can hear the count now, pushes it up. He's into the lane. He's passed everyone, and he finishes at the buzzer there. 61-57, so I think that's year nine and ten players. Mistake by Christ College to end the second quarter. They shot too early. They gave up two points. And then a mistake there by Hillmont, and they shot too early, gave up two points. 61 at 57. We'll be back in a moment. At Lincoln, we we'll seek to ensure that future generations can grow and thrive. That means providing a world class learning environment to grow fresh solutions to real-world problems, including using the world's resources wisely and sustainably. Come to Lincoln University, a place to grow. All 
All right, welcome back. Fourth quarter action about to get underway, and we have a great one here for you. Exactly how you want the very first season NZCT Grocott Trophy competition here. Hillmorton, they've been up virtually the entire game. Christ scored the first two, and it's pretty much been Hillmorton between one and ten points since then. But yeah, we're looking like we're coming down to the wire here, Rani. We are a bit here, and look, I, I said this briefly before we took a break after the third but it's going to be the foul trouble for Christ College that'll stop them yeah it, it, it will really be the foul trouble I think you said 19 yeah 19 is a, a total for their team Hillmorton only on nine yeah and I mean Christ does have more players they've got 12 here active that they can play and 11 of them have played but it's you know the, the problem is you're not those 19 fouls aren't getting distributed equally mm. Josh Anahan here we can see about to get the ball he's got three that's a, a big worry. Mm. Uh, Tafiti Kate, he has two fouls, so he should be okay. Uh, Nija, he has three, so that's another another key player. I mean, Kenny, he had two really quick hairs and fouled since then. What is that? How many does Louis Tupuola have? Uh, he has two fouls, so 12 points, oh. nine rebounds for him. Kenny, he has four points, 10 rebounds. Tafiti Kate, 11 and 11, and five assists as well. So that's probably the, the key performance there. Josh Shannon had 8.6 rebounds. And then for Hillmorton, well, they had three double-figure scorers. They have four now, so just going through a numerical order. Four, Finland Grohl, he has 10. Seven, Chucky Tahiti, he has 13, not quite 16 there. Toby Langrell, number nine, he has 19 points. And num number 24, Junior Foyava, he came alive there at the end of the third. He has 11. Nijar, the spin, the bucket is good. Two-point game now. Christ College coming back. Here's Tahiti, sorry, Fuiaba. Finlater gives it back to him, into the lane, bumps the defender, and nice little, not a floater there, just mm. kind of a push shot there once he created the space. Grace, between two, hard shot there. And it is cleared, Toby Legrell up to Chucky Tahiti. Almost the fake in and out, crossover, no good there. He, Gets the tip and the ball gets lost straight back to him. And Tip Wallace says, I'm just going to take that, guys. Here he is. A good pass here. Shanahan in. Turns around. And nice little drop in there over Finlater. One bucket difference between these two teams here. Fuiava. Against uh, Kate. Kate just keeps his body in front here. Here's Langrell. Quick three over Shanahan's hand. No good. Kate now with the rebound. Chance to push here. Shanahan was looking to go to the rim. He drives out. Just misses the three-point bucket. And Grace grabs the rebound. Puts it in. Tie game. And you can't see him here. I saw a little fist bump there from you, Rani. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway, Tahiti, he misses at the lane. At the key now and Christ College chance to grab the lead for the I'm gonna double check I feel like it was right at the start was the last time they've had it and ball gets lost yep. out of bounds I think you're right first play of the game oh they've had it since then but it was really really close mm. at the start so they have not they led 2-0 since then they've had a one point lead once which was right mm. at the start of the oh sorry actually no they did have a 1.1 towards the end of the third quarter there so it has been back and forth, yeah, but Hill Morton, like they were up at 15 one stage late in the second quarter there. So Christ College, a fantastic job to fight back into the game here. It's so what you love as a commentator, a game that goes down to the final couple of positions. Nice hook pass. No good. And Stewart not able to grab the rebound. Kate steps through and tries to grab the loop around. Josh Shanahan, he's been the offensive rebounder. Finisher can't make that one. They're Tahiti now pushing it up the left-hand wing. Into Kite. And you can see that, like, great recognition by Tahiti. The defense, bad position there. And he just kind of leans into them. Draws the foul call there and he's shooting two now. Yeah. I think, I think another problem we're sort of seeing in these fast-break situations is... I know he's getting the ball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one one problem we're seeing in these fast break situations is sort of is, is sort of they're worrying about the the man with the ball before yep. they are the rim. 
and and then it's a, it's an easy kick, uh, it's an easy it's it's an easy pass up the floor for a pretty quick layup, or yeah. just like we're seeing now, a, a quick foul and two at the line. So it, it'll be tough to tough to make that adjustment, but they've sort of they sort of have to. Yeah, <laughs> they have been a lot better at you know sort of walling up and not jumping for stuff. Like Kate has had a couple, but his have not really put him in danger of getting a foul after that first one. Yeah, and the man with the ball there, Archie, Archie Nijar, he, he's he's great at walling up, isn't he? Yes, he's done a really good job. The three no good, and we have a push there. And body language, I believe that'll be against number four, Finn Langrell. Just, and the signal there was that he was pushing mm. a little bit too much in the rebound battle there and I mean I when I'm referring I'm like it you know rebounds that's kind of the you're allowed a bit more contact there than you normally are as Nija looked like he had, he was second guessing it all the way up through that mm. shot misses that one there Tahiti in out Langrell fake steps pull up jumper from the free throw line off to the right there good rebound Stewart no good and Kate grabs the rebound here for Christ College He's calling for a ball screen up the top. Swings it over to Nija. Shanahan. Grace. I think they want it shifted back over. Here we are. What Inside. Okay, what a cut. What a pass. As you said, tie game here. 65-65 the scoreline now. And Stewart misses the first, misses the second. And Nija, you could see he was like, I'm going to yeah. No, I better not try too hard because I don't want to get a foul. Does get a foul, but that's that point you had. If you don't box out, you put yourself in just a compromising position here. And I will check the fouls there. That maybe who was it? It did go against Nijar, didn't it? And he has what well says three. I'll check the play-by-play -play if that is three plus one about to go up, or if that was oh, oh, actually it says Tuffity Kate, was it? So that's a, um, well that gives him four I think from memory. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, only two for him, so that's okay. All oh, right. So that's, I guess, not the, not the worst thing in the world if the foul goes against him given the numbers. But again, like they're, they're heading towards the bonus. Although a tight game, maybe if there's any quarter you want to be in the bonus, it's the fourth one. Yeah. So that you can stop the clock if you need to at the end. But you don't want to be there with six minutes. To no, go. you don't. Yeah. yeah, one team fell to two, so it is what you can see on the screen is correct. Six oh five here to play fourth quarter action NZCT Grocott Trophy competition. And there's a drive, and oh, I couldn't quite see the ball seemed to get lost. Tough finish there, Jackson Grace and Christ College back in front against yeah it didn't feel like it was looking that way for a long time but here they are up one Finland Grell the three pretty flat and a little bit too long Luca Kenny with a rebound Grace now pushing up the left hand side wraparound pass Shanahan doesn't shoot it Nija tough shot there and rebound is collected by Finlater Langrell over to Tahiti here Shanahan's just organising the defence as to who's covering who Shanahan takes that moment of just communication and not awareness to go straight down the lane and score two points there. And the Tiger faithful making plenty of light noise now. Grace gets the, the ghost screen there from Shanahan. Nijar hit solidly by Finland Grell and Asajj grabs the rebound there. Tahiti with the ball now. Swings it over to Finn Langrell. Fuiaba replaces up the top. Langrell is, yep, yeah, it's not going to be easy to score there against guys a foot taller. Shanahan just rolls off the rim. Luca Kenny can't grab it. Fuiaba here with the ball. In and out now. He's got two. Passes it up. Finn Langrell fakes the three, waits for his teammates. Here's Fuiaba. Draws two. Tahiri, open three for him, just too strong there. Both teams here looking a little bit like we don't want to make a mistake. We've got to be really sure of what we want to do here. 
and Kate looks a little bit like, don't try and foul me, don't try and, <laughs> well, don't try and take the ball off me there. And Toby Langrell re-entering the game for his younger brother Finn Langrell. So two team fouls each, 4.09 to play here, fourth quarter action. Christ College with the ball on the baseline, here's Kate. With the rebound goes to Grace. Nijar now swings it over to Kenny. And yeah, just lost the ball. Tahiti now between two. Shanahan lets him go as opposed to risking a foul there. Hill Morton up three points now. 70 67. Kate, not much room there against Foyava. Finn later switches out onto him. Grace. And Kate has not hit a three, I don't think, this game. And there is a push from Kenny there. The much, much smaller Langrell picked up the rebound anyway. And Kenny, I mean, he did really well. Two fouls right at the start. That's only foul number three for him. 3.39 to play here. Toby Langrell, JJ Finlater steps in, and there's going to be a treble there, yeah. Just going a little bit too fast, yeah. defence not where you expected and then just that extra step when you've picked the ball up. This is where that composure that we were talking about at the very start of this game yeah. is going to be very, very important for these teams. It's going to be so important as we sort of enter into the closing stages of the game. And there we go. How often do you see that? Back-to-back -back travel calls. Not often. No. Not often. So we go Hillmorton Tigers and Red NZCT Grocott Trophy competition. Here's Toby Langrell. Swings it, Tahiti. The fake into the lane, the quick pass. But unfortunately, Finlater was like, I've, I've got to get it out of the key and then go back in. And that was right at the moment the pass came. Nijar, the deep pass, and just about picked off. It does get through to Grace. Passes Kenny, rolls off the rim. Finlater with the rebound. He turns pushes the ball up straight away finds Tahiti Toby Langrell the quick fake Fuiava the fake defense isn't jumping though Tahiti he's going to drill he's going to take this one I shouldn't have said drill it <laughs> he's going to take this three Fuiava the steal no good with the finish Kate rebound loses it but it goes to Grace here's Shanahan and he threw it to Tahiti's hands it gets through I believe it was Nija and Christ College just almost rushing it here, not quite able to make the buckets right at the end of the position. Still only down three points here. Tahiri into the lane. And we'll see who the foul is. Is it Kate, 22? Does look like it. It does. And I believe that's foul number three on him. Anyway, we have Chucky Tahiri at the line shooting two here. 2.18 to play in the fourth quarter. Makes the first one. Four point lead. Just a little bit of a buffer there. I haven't been tracking the timeouts for both teams. I believe Christ have taken one. And I don't think Hillmorton has this quarter at all, but that may have been the time to take one before the free throw if you didn't have something you wanted to say. Up five, Tupuola just too strong. I, I think he honestly may have been like Finlater's like he just cleared me out of the way. Yeah, yeah. that is true. I think Tupuola was pushed a little bit, which you know, Finlater's the one that drew the brunt of that. Tipped out of bounds here. Hillmorton will stay off the ball. 153. So both teams now, regardless, only two timeouts that they can take through. And we have a substitution coming in for Hill Morden, number 22, Maxwell Stewart. And Finlater, you can see there a bit gimpy after that bump there. He does have a bit of a brace on his right knee. Here's Tahiri over Fuiava into the lane. And just not the greatest balance there. Did get the shot up there. Christ College clears it. Here's Nijar Tupuola. Head down to the rim, and let's see which way this goes. It's going it's to be called a foul. Ooh. 
and yeah, you can. You don't have to be perfectly squared up if you just get cleared out with the arm, which is a. I saw the the end of that. I couldn't see the start of the play there, but it certainly looked like the arm was fully extended, just creating space. And I mean, he, he's been able to get it to the rim. So yeah, 72, 69 here. What do you think we're going to see from Hill Morton? And then what do you think we're going to see from Christ College here? Uh, if I was Hill Morton, this is a, a little bit, maybe a little bit left of field here. Yep. You've got, you've still got to push the pace against this Christ College team. Like the majority of, maybe not points, yep. but fouls have come from Hill Morton pushing the ball and Christ College putting themselves into yep. trouble. And if you look at the foul count again, Christ College have put themselves in trouble yeah. um, so you, you'd surely want to make the most of that and, yes. and push the pace get a quick bucket if not get a get a foul yeah I, I agree like there's the game's tight three points obviously it's one possession this is not the time to be you know running clock like you want to you want to make the team play defence so you still want to be moving the ball and if they make a mistake you want to attack when you should you don't want to just be passing the ball around using clock and then find you can't get a good shot on the flip side, Christ College, you know, what would you be saying if you're Coach Higgins here? Look, I think as hard as it, as it will be for the boys, they just have to have patience with their clock. Yeah. But they have to have patience because they're settling for these sort of rushed and, yeah, you know, they're, they're going up with shots that are unbalanced and they're not the great shots that they're after. Yeah. They, they do want these great shots that they will get them, but they've still got to keep looking for them. Yeah. Um, and, and at the moment, just before that, they weren't. Yeah. So anyway, Hillmore here, they elected... To take the ball in the backcourt, full 24 on the shot clock. You can see a minute 30 in the game here. Three point lead. Here's Langrell, gets the switch. Triple Ola lost, pull up jumper, and drills it. That was NBA esque there. Just here's the switch I want, make him dance, and then just drill it at him. Grace here into the lane. Good switch out there, draws two. Shanahan could have taken the three and said, goes to the rim. Bit of contact there, nice finish, good balance inside. Two points, the margin here, 108 to play now. Langrell calling for the screen again. Shanahan stays with him this time. Tahiti, Nijar, hand up in his face. The switch here, Nijar, good size to stay against Langrell. Shanahan, Tahiti, Fuiava into the lane. Kenny challenges it, uh, not Kenny, Nijar challenges it. And here's Shanahan, 46 seconds here, ball goes to Kate. Hasn't hit a three all game. Oh, with four. Will be a good time to hit one here. Goes into the lane. Floater is good. One point game. 35 on the clock here. Hillmorton. They've got to put a shot up here. And they could potentially even look to go really quick so they have a, a shot at the end if they miss. A bit too late now here. 25. Fuiava, the floater, no good. Kate, the rebound here. Looks up at the clock. 20 seconds. So they can hold for the last one here. One point game, into the lane, the floater, he hits it. Hillmorton, no timeout. Toby Langrow pushing the ball, 12 seconds on the clock here. Tahiti, they're holding it up here. I think you want to go a little bit faster. Langrell in, tough shot there, no good. The rebound, Stewart goes to the ground, finds Fuiava, no oh, yeah. space there. Oh, it's a foul, James. There is a, a foul. foul. So there's going to be a check here. Is there time on the clock here? This is going to be a long conversation. It is. It has to be. So Fuiava's already at the line, like just planting the seeds in there. So the foul is on Kate, number 22. I think it's foul number four for him. It will be shooting whether it was on the floor or not. But how do you feel about overtime? Well, like we've got a one-point game. This is the only way we can really get overtime is we need a foul and we need him to split these free throws here. So referees, I think, are just 100% checking. Was their time, and is this the bonus if they... Because I don't know if they called it a shooting foul. Well, actually, no, well, a signal on the arm. Yeah. So they did signal it was shooting, but I think it is... Obviously, we've got people from both teams here on the school bench. We also have Canterbury basketball employees, Richard Kenny and Ollie Wilkinson behind, who were tracking that. I mean, I guess if someone wanted, they could look on, jump on the live stream, rewind a little bit, and you should be able to see the LED light strip to tell... Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily when the whistle goes, it's when the foul happens as to if there's time there. And this is probably the one where it is, well, the rules are now you have to have time on the clock. And especially that one there, that yeah. was on the way up as opposed to the ball getting lost here. 
So there is a discussion. So point four yeah. is looks like it is on the clock with two shots here. Yeah. And I believe we're gonna if he makes the second, there's gonna be a timeout here yeah. for Christ College. So the good thing is point four, enough time for a catch, catch and, and shoot, shoot if yeah. we do if Christ College needs it, but hey. Me, I'd like overtime here. I'd like him to make the first, miss the second, and then we've got no time, and then we go into overtime. Regardless of what it, whatever happens, what a fantastic inaugural final. Oh, so, so the first one is missed. So Tahiri here, like, got to make this. If he does miss it, though, but Christ College, you've got to make yep. sure you box out. And you just keep an eye on the guys outside here. I can see them ready to sprint in. Second one is good. Time it's out, Christ College. Yes. It's a timeout. Junior Foyava. Clutch makes the second one there. 75-75. Mm. And I mean, this is normally game number one. People would start arriving for this, which will be the, the Wheel and Trophy Division 1 competition. It was meant to tip off at 5.45. I'm going to tell you now that's not going to happen. <laughs> I imagine both teams will probably get, they'll have... 10 minutes warm up time maybe only 5 minutes Nicole Gleason said yes to either so somewhere between 5 and 10 <laughs> minutes there so so who's going to get the shot here <laughs> who's it going to be designed for look I have no idea the the way I am leaning purely purely by how the game is sort of played out and, and the inside finishing yep. I would draw something up for Louis Tupuola here yeah but it's He's done all of his off the bounce, so point four he can't yeah. dribble, so it's got to be who's your best catch and immediate shooter. I feel like, you know, it's yeah, I, I'd kind of want to reward the guys that have got you back into this game, and that's been Tafferty Kate, he's played the whole time. And then uh, it's been Josh Shanahan, sorry, Josh Shanahan and Tafferty Kate, the two that have done most of the work, you know, getting those points when they needed, so... No surprise here, Christ College, they're going to advance the ball up into the front court, which will mean the shot clock goes down, but yeah. it's, it's not going to make a difference whatsoever for them. This is going to be catch and shoot regardless. So it's not going to be Shanahan. He's going to be the inbounder here. Kate is miles away on the opposite side of the court. There he is there, just coming into the screen. It looks like it's the elevators play to the sideline. The lob pass there, and that went in. What, what happens yeah. there? Nothing right. happens there. It'll actually go back to Hillmorton. Yeah. No one touched it. So it'll actually go where he inbounded it. But Hillmorton's going to have their opportunity now. So I guess, I mean, maybe that's my plays of the week sorted now. Yeah. Like inbound bank. I mean, that would be the third bank three if, if you were allowed to do that for Christ College. That would add a whole new dynamic to the game. It would. It? Yeah. That was a... It was a good idea to look for the lob pass at the back. It was just, you know, it's pretty hard to catch. You know, yeah. that obviously bounced on our side of the, the backboard there and then went in. It's hard to catch on the same side, you know, the ball coming from behind you and finishing point four. So it needed to just be a little bit further to the left, yep. to the other side of the rim there for the lob pass there. Yeah. I, I don't and I know guess Josh Shanahan maybe not be the inbound passer yeah. in more situations like that, that. That might not have been in the plan, but I think it was probably the right thing to do yeah, for Josh I do. Shanahan. Yeah, I do. But I think they were looking for Kate first on that sort of... And he didn't go through the elevator screen. He came on the bottom yeah. of them, so it came, became almost a side-to-side -side flex. And, and then for Luca Kenny to roll to the yeah. basket weak side. Yeah, that would have been the plan. But what a game. It is. This is what we love to see. I mean, I'm feeling overtime. I'm feeling it, but yeah. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> and I, I definitely do not mind five more minutes of action here. So Finn Langrell, he's going to be inbounding the ball here for the Hillmorton Tigers. And I think you'll be looking for Tahiti, Toby. Toby gets it, quick shot, and that is no too good. strong. So here we go. Fourth quarter action in the books there. Christ College, they have the better of the fourth quarter there. And they means we get five more minutes of action here tie game 75 75 18 to 14 was the score in the fourth quarter there in favor of Christ College we'll step away we'll be back in around about a minute's time here as we bring you the fifth period the overtime period here
At Lincoln, we seek to ensure that future generations can grow and thrive. That means providing a world-class learning environment to grow fresh solutions to real-world problems, including using the world's resources wisely and sustainably. Come to Lincoln University, a place to grow. All right, so here we go. You can see the team fouls, they stay at a two to five here. We're not in any more quarters now. We are in overtime here, and we're just going to keep on going until one team is left standing here. But what a fight back from Christ College. They didn't do it like in a really quick rush. It was just a little bit of time over and over, got closer and closer, and then just a battle back and forth. You know, I guess clutch plays, a couple of mistakes, and you know plays that people will want back towards the end. And here we go, five more minutes of extra basketball NZCT Grocott Trophy competition. What a way to finish season number one. And Helmut and Dar here, they get the chance. And you can't see us on screen, we're up standing here now. We set down most of the game, but now it's time to stand up for the last bit of action, isn't it, Rani? It is. It is. What a fantastic final this has been. Here we go, Tahiri, he's open on the left hand. Great pass inside, Stewart. Good defense there from Shanahan. He makes a nice finish inside. First blood for Hillmore and Tigers in overtime. Here's Shanahan, dribbles up. Well defended by Tahiri. Kate bails him out here, just comes behind. Fakes the handoff, he's open, doesn't shoot the three. Inside, Tupuola. Nice spin to the left, makes the bucket there. I think he surprised the defense, Drew too. He's gone right, 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 right. No, I'm going left this time. Finished at the rim, made the bucket, draws the foul, and a chance to give Christ College a one-point lead here. And one, you know, we talked about the fouls being a potential issue for Christ College. Issue for Hill Morden, JJ Finlater, the, the bang knee. He hasn't been in since then, so Max Stewart, a very good player. I think you'd rather have Finlater if you could as a rebound. Missed there, Tupuola gets the second one, makes that Christ College up two. Almost one minute of action gone here in overtime. Tahiri, Finn Langrell just loses the ball. Went to Fuiava, creates a bit of space, he's just looking to try and draw something there. Tupuola, great runner there from Fuiava, misses it. And you can see there the arm from Tupuola in as Fuiava got that one. And checking the box through. I don't think he's in a whole lot of danger, but as you've said, every single quarter, Christ College have been in the bonus. And for Weaver, he made the impo most important free throw, but he did split the last two that he just had. And I, I did say at the start of the, well, before we started the fourth quarter, that the foul situation may come back to bite Christ College. And yeah. they've got to play four more minutes in the bonus. Yeah, Tupuola. I mean, him personally, that is only foul number three, I think, for him. So not... Well, I mean, I don't know how long we're going to play for. It's the way these game, these teams have been going. Substitution here, Asage coming in, number 16. Finn Langrell going out. And good news for the Hillmorton Tigers, just off screen. JJ Finn later back in and looking like his leg's moving pretty well there. And he's getting MVP chance. Well, I don't even know who is like it's... <laughs> Luckily it's not us, up to us, I haven't even looked at who are the ones. Tupuola lost the ball there and it is going to be a travel there. He'll be frustrated with that, but I mean it is the right call and off that pick and roll it looks yep. dangerous. It looked very dangerous. Now the defence was almost going there before he even got there. Asage, the rebound, the screen, sorry, Toby Langrell. Trouble there, Asage, strong rebound. Battles for it, we're going to have a tie ball and this one will stay with Christ College. It was good timing on the screen. Toby Langrell just well defended there by Christ College. And then tying up the loose ball there. 3.39 to play here in overtime. Christ College in white. Hillmord and Tigers here in red. Nija is that drag move that he does normally at the rim. Shanahan behind the arc. Back to Kate here. The ball screen up top. Tupuola. Switch. Kate turn around. Too strong there. No good. Finlater picks up the rebound. One on three. He goes in, takes a nice 
angle to the rim there and finishes that one. Hillmorton up one point now, 80-79, 3-10 to play OT. Now, the, the interesting thing is, James, is Christ College have had playoff experience in, in overtime. <laughs> yes, just last week, right, and boom, the three points. They've been cold, cold, went hot for a little bit, and then not much since here. That is a good sign if you're a Christ College fan. Up two points now, 82-80. Big time three there in overtime for Jack Howard. Actually, not Jack Howard. It was it Grace who had that, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was Jackson Grace. But the answer, Hillmorton says, we, don't, we can keep on playing all night, guys, if we have to. 82-80 now, 2.30. Tupuola, force to the left, looks for the swing pass. Underneath Nijar, too strong, gets his own miss, puts it back in, Christ College back on top. 84-82, Toby Langrell now. These teams, these teams are just going toe-to-toe, -to -toe. it's basket for basket at the moment. Yeah, it feels like the nerves have gone now. Langrell misses that one. You're Shanahan right. rushed him, but Tupuola the rebound. You're right, the nerves are gone. In fact, travel called on Josh Shanahan, but the nerves are gone. They're just playing basketball. They are now. It is, you know, both teams playing at a pretty high level, which is, you know, it is, um, it's almost disappointing someone has to lose this, but we do need one champion, and that's, you know, we've just had the, the FIFA Women's World Cup, and, you know, the, the playoff games, and that's where we're in, you need to have a winner. You can't have a draw. But basketball just generally, like, there's not many other sports where it's like, no matter what, we are finding a winner. As Langrell gets blocked there, Tupuola the rebound. Nija, no idea that there was Fuiava right in front of him. Lost the ball and Fuiava a bit quick there. Trying to say it was tipped out of bounds. Sandra French on the baseline. No, it was not tipped out of bounds, or it was by your own guy. Christ College with the ball here. A minute 45 left to play. Here's Grace, right hand side. Finds Kate. Kate, the back heart to Nijar, slides through the lane, rebound, Tupuola, just trying to muscle his way through, Fuiava, he just sees the opportunity, and no, you need both feet over and the ball, he did not do that, and that, that oh, I guess, noise from the crowd was saying there should be back over half, yeah. no, we will going to say, if you want to call that, you should probably go learn the rules. Here's Kate, loses in the side. Grace, the rebound, and he will be going to the line to shoot two. The good news, not only the two free throws here for Christ College up two, but this does put Helmordon on to four, so next foul will be shooting two. Well, shooting for Christ unless it's an offensive foul. You can see Dave Langrell there like, come on, we've got to make better decisions with the ball. Like, we're just, we're giving it to Christ College. Like, we need to get shots, and then we've got to box out. The um, other the other part to this to this floor is it's it's covered in stickers, isn't it? From a, a range of yes, a range yeah, of basketball so, seasons. Yeah, so we we'll say we've been very nice to the Canterbury Rams, mainly in Paul uh, You know, keeping their sponsors on there along with Lincoln University. Langrell deep pass to Hedy, not able to hang on to it. One o three to go, and he's saying I was. A little bit of a push there. Mm. I think the pass was pretty hopeful, to be honest. Coach Dave Lingrow asking for a full court man press. Shanahan screens across. Finlater closes him, and Tahiti picks it off, gets the jumper, can't make the finish there. Nija picks the ball up. In the backcourt, Tahiti almost another steal. They've got a chance They've for an eight. They shouldn't get a foul here. Kate, so smart, gets through everyone. And there, Langrell just knocks it out of bounds. 43 seconds in overtime here. Christ College up three, 13 on the shot clock here. Yeah, the Hillmorden bench did want an eight second violation for not getting a pass. I, I think he got there just I in time. I thought they were just it in was, time, yeah. It was really smart by him just to go full speed and get over. Both teams only one time out in overtime each, so no one wants to use it yet. Here's Gracie hit the last three. He hits this one as well. Christ College now up by six points. Langrell, they need to score quickly here. He takes a pull up three and boom! Wow. Wow. Hits that one. 30 seconds wow. here, overtime. Three point game. They don't need to foul here, but they need a stop. Kate, the crossover on Fuiava and Tupuola. 
Lucky not to be whistled for a moving, well not a moving but a leaning screen mm. there out of his cylinder. Here's Kate, 10 seconds on the clock here. Christy turns it over and will they go for three here? They're dribbling it out here. There's Tahiti, he was open, six on the clock. They need to shoot the three. Tahiti drives in, Langrell loses it, fakes, throws it up no and good. can't make it. Hillmorton looking for a foul there. I don't think there was one there that was leaning into it. Christ College, huge, huge come from behind when they're 88 to 85 in overtime. We're going to have to find out who the MVP is because I've got to announce it to the crowd there. But, but what a game. I know Nicole Gleason will let us know very soon who the MVP is. But what did you think of that, Rani? What a game. What a game and what a way to kick off this competition. What, yeah, it was... What a way I mean, we've been standing for what, like 10, 15 minutes now, like it's fantastic basketball there. And I mean, Hillmorton, they'll be disappointed. They do have the under 15 championship mm. from the weekend. But, you know, this is a this is what basketball should be. And mm. junior, junior year 9, 10 basketball, just absolutely fantastic game here. So we've got the announcement of who the MVP is. So I'll head over to, I'll leave you here. I'll do the courtside announcing for the entire stadium. And you'll be able to hear me on the mic as well here. Right, so you can go through the stats, I guess, until I'm ready to speak. Fantastic. Wow, what a game. Wow. Okay, it does look like your leading scorers for Christ College were Jackson, Grace, and Louis Tupuola with 18 points apiece. That was a very good effort from them, and the leading scorer for Hill Morton, Toby Langrell with 24 points, Chucky Tahira with 19 for himself. A fantastic game and Christ College have won the game. We'll wait for James with our award ceremony and MVP announcement. But wowee, what a game and what a first way to kick off this brand new competition. finish off the first ever season of the NZCT Grocott Trophy competition. Just before we get it too far into it, just like to welcome to centre stage here Tim Grocott, one of the sons of John Grocott, the late John Grocott, who this competition is named after. So a round of applause, Tim Grocott, please. And then they had to work overtime in this game. Thank you very much to the two referees for the game, Cheyenne Coles and Sandra French. Hard game to do, fantastic job. So both teams, just a tremendous game here. Obviously, we needed extra time to decide a winner. Hill Morton, you can be extremely proud of the season. But congratulations, Christ College. Christ College, could your team captain come up and the rest of the team here, please? So Tafiti Kate, captain. Also have to mention, I don't have the stats with me, but Tafiti Kate, finals MVP from the Go-Kart Trophy competition. So Tafiti, I'll get you to say a few words just before the photo, or we can have it in here. So game, you guys were down by 15 points at one stage. How proud of you of the fight back from your team here? Two straight overtime playoff wins against teams that beat you for earlier in the season. Oh, it's been good. Um, it's just good having these guys on the team. They just help us fight through the hard times, and then that's how we make our comebacks and get the dub. Uh, fantastic game. It was a lot of fun to commentate as well here. I'm going to leave it there with you guys. Congratulations, season number one, NZCT Grocott Cup Trophy champions, Christ College.